Hey guys, what's up? My name is Marina and I'm a Certified Information Systems Auditor from Tech News. Today we're going to talk about end-user computing, its benefits and associated risks and controls. Surprisingly, there's not much information I found on the internet about this topic, so I'm going to share with you today everything I learned during my degree studies, as well as from my personal working experience. So without further ado, let's go! So what is end-user computing? End-user computing is a set of practices and technologies to allow non-programmers to be able to develop their own systems through the use of various tools and techniques. As you might imagine, it comes with a great deal of benefits. For example, it reduces the company IT efforts needed for the end-user management that can be pretty painful for major organizations with a big number of users, with a diverse infrastructures, uh, users in multiple locations, with a wide range of endpoint devices. So in addition, these days of smart working with more and more employees uh, using their personal devices, this issue is more evident than ever. Let's use a Microsoft Access example for better understanding. Microsoft Access is a database management system and is a standard and most popular end-user computing solution along with Microsoft Excel that allows users to import datasets from other applications such as SAP, customize the view of this dataset and create their own reports. This way, the end users have access to the company data in the form that is suitable for them. They can be using their personal laptop. It does not represent a great risk to the organization as long as users access the company resources centrally and securely, for example, through the virtual desktop or a desktop as a service. Now, I've got a question for you. Can you think of an other example of an end user computing application or system? Let me know in the comments. So in a traditional setup, company provides hardware, software, network, data to the users, as well as IT resources for supporting users and relating processes such as asset management, user management, backup, disaster recovery, incident management, and so on. In the end-user computing setup, let's consider that majority of users are working from home, using their own network, their own laptops and applications, while users still have access to company data through, for example, a virtual desktop, the computing occurs at the endpoint side and allows companies to reduce their direct and indirect costs. As a result, end-user computing implies the following benefits. Reduced involvement of IT support staff, Simplified asset management due to fewer devices within the corporate network. Centralized user management due to virtualization and remote desktop services. Plus, there is an added soft benefit of employees feeling more empowered to be able to create their own systems the way that is most suitable and efficient for them. But with all due respect to the end-user computing practices, it does come with a bunch of risks that organizations should be aware of before implementing and utilizing the EUC practices. As we said, one of the benefits of the EUC is the reduced involvement needed from the IT department. But this might as well be a downside to the EUC practices. Lack of IT involvement opens up a range of risks because the applications developed by the end users may not be covered by, by the corporate policies and standard software development methodologies. Thus, user-developed systems may be missing out on such aspects as proper authorization, authentication, audit logging, encryption, change management and release management, correct processing that impacts the data reliability, security, backup and disaster recovery procedures, and so on. So what should companies do in order to mitigate the risks arising from the EUC practices? First of all, a company should develop and enforce an end-user computing policy. A company should also have an inventory of all end-user computing applications and determine a criticality for every application as part of the backup and recovery procedures. End-user computing systems should also be subject to the data classification and ensure that those applications containing sensitive data are properly managed at the same level as other corporate software assets. Okay, guys, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and write me some comments. I don't know, I would reply to everyone. Um, I wish you all a good day and I see you in the next video.